Hey everyone, it's Instructor Howe, and this is an After Effects tutorial where we're going to look at layers and transparency of layers and how we composite those together. Uh, what I'd like to do in this tutorial is start with uh, this manhole cover and uh, we'll do a few things. Number one, I want to change this from a bright daytime uh, photograph to something that's much more uh, ominous, uh, nighttime, nighttime uh, effect. And I also want to add some kind of glowing green underground radioactive uh, river here and some light and some steam or smoke coming out so that we can add some motion to this photo as well. I think that with that example we'll be able to do a lot of different, uh, uh, use a lot of different techniques for transparency and compositing. And uh, so, I'm, so I'm, I, I hope you, uh, I hope this is a pretty comprehensive tutorial. All right, so let me start by, I'll just delete that, uh, uh, that composition. Uh, and one thing I like to do is let me, well, let me drag this. I'd imported this photo, which you have the URL from in the uh, opening scene. Uh, drag it to make a new comp. And this new composition is, is going to be the exact same size of the, as the photograph. Obviously, this isn't a, a widescreen video format, but uh, we'll just work in the size of the photograph here. Uh, I like to make sure that my project settings have a bit depth of 16 bit per channel. I think it works better with gradients and a few other things uh, to eliminate artifacts, even when we're exporting out to 8-bit H.264 video. Okay, so now we have our, uh, our baseline here. First thing I'll do is just duplicate this, layer, control D, or edit, duplicate. Uh, so that I have an original and I can kind of toggle between the two. And to, to make this from day to night, I want to use some tools that will uh, uh, kind of complement what I know in Photoshop. So if I were to use the levels tool, uh, take a look. I'm just right clicking in the effects controls panel and bringing up uh, uh, under color correction. There's lots of great tools in here, uh, but you should be familiar with levels if you've used Photoshop. And so I can drag the midtones value up, and we can start to get a darker, uh, uh, a darker range of, of values here. Uh, we're seeing some, uh, obviously, more and more of the uh, color information in the picture is below the midtone value. So we're we're adding some good darkness overall. Uh, and of course, I can adjust these as we go. That's one of the really nice things about After Effects is I can just stack these one on top of the other. Uh, let's see. So, uh, so far that we got a little more contrast. Um, I think it would be good to uh, to use curves and maybe boost some of the blue values a little bit. So we have curves. We can. You typically might see a uh, uh, an S shape for curves where we kind of bring the darks down, crush the blacks as they say, and then uh, uh, and then bring the brights up, and that gives us kind of a a boost overall. Uh, but in this case, I would want to go through and start to look at the individual RGB color channel curves. Because my blues for a nighttime scene, I'm going to want to have, uh, oops, make sure we choose that. And choose the blues. Uh, see, I grabbed the uh, RGB curve, which I want to keep kind of centered. Actually, an easy thing to do here is to, uh, is to just reset. Um, and then I have... Go back to my blues, and we can control these as well. So I can boost the uh, the blue values in my midtones, and oops, add another point there. Let's drag that off, and keep my highlights relatively the same. Uh, and then I can choose my red color channel, and drag that down. So that does a lot. We're getting rid of that uh, that red value, um, and the greens we can bring down as well. Uh, I think you'll get mixed results here. I think the greens <clears throat> work well. So there's uh we've definitely now we're now we're at a point where we've we've started to change the actual mood. If I toggle the layer visibility, you can see the original photo, and we're starting to darken things up a little bit now. Uh, let's see. One last thing I can do is. 
and I'm not getting my right click here because oh, I got it right at the bottom there. Uh, if I right click on an existing effect, it doesn't really allow me to, but I can right click here or I can right click on the layer itself and go into effect, color correction, and uh, let's use the uh, uh, brightness and contrast and just gives us a little bit more control over brightness we'll want to bring down for the darkness values uh, because it's nighttime and the contrast will bring up uh, to that level. Okay, uh, if I wanted to, we could also introduce more blue color into this. I would probably do this with a layer style and just do a color overlay. And that looks pretty bad. You can see that uh, uh, the default value for the color overlay here is red. Uh, so we could choose a darker blue, much more muted, um, a little purple, and start to either play with just opacity. You could see that we're actually changing the color there. Um, but if I, if I leave this at 100%, we could choose the hue itself, and it becomes basically a monochrome image. But with a lower opacity for this color overlay, we're introducing a lot of blue in and I think that takes more of the red out. So I think that looks pretty good. Now it's very dark right now. We're going to have a kind of a different light source here. We're going to have this, uh, this, this some green goop being able to be seen through this, this cover here. I think that's going to essentially be the light source soon enough. Actually, we can toggle this to see. That's a pretty significant change. Definitely a, a big increase in contrast and uh, uh, a definite mood change as well. All right, let's make a new shape layer. And I'm going to use the pen tool and I'm gonna zoom in on our manhole cover here. <clears throat> and I just want to draw, let's see, we don't need a stroke. I want a bright green color here for my uh, uh, underground river of sludge. And uh, I'm going to click and drag and I'll hold the Alt key so that I can start to draw Bezier corners. Uh, hold the Alt key. And all right, so this isn't gonna be perfect, but it's a good starting point. And that shape can be spaced out to look like this. I like that that way I like this over here you can always redraw this by holding control alt down on the PC and uh, all option on a Mac all right and so I've basically just kind of drawn in this uh, this uh, layer on top um, and so we can call this uh, uh, I'm gonna call this the shape goop green goop and we'll make the layer name a little bit bigger. We're not going to be doing much animation, so this timeline doesn't have to be have to be huge at this point. So obviously, you can refine this to fit uh, any any shape that you want, uh, but this looks close enough for me. Uh, this is going to be a glowing green goop, so I could use a blur and use a, a Gaussian blur on this, like a ten pixel blur. Does that make it better? Eh, that might work. For, uh, for, what, for what we have. <clears throat> um, but at this point, I think it's pretty clear that uh, we, have, uh, we have our new light source. Uh, the green goop is going to be the brightest thing in the scene. And um, so I think this bright part from the sunny photo might actually be a little distracting. So what I'm going to do is on top of the uh, uh, manhole JPEG image, we're gonna add a new layer, and it'll be solid. And we'll just do a, uh, just a pure black 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 layer. And it automatically matches the, the width of our composition. So uh, if it doesn't, you can always click that. And we'll say okay. And so this is, this is what we'll use to, to kind of black out things um, and add shadows when we're not around the uh, um, 
when we're not around the actual manhole or, or that green goop light source. And so what I'll do is just hit the T key to bring up our transparency or opacity. And uh, I just want to dial this down so I can start to see the image behind it. And now I can use the pen tool and I have the black layer selected. So there's a pen tool. Uh, this is going to draw a mask. So this is a uh, layer transparency tool uh, that works just like a layer mask in Photoshop. So if I want to uh, draw this mask, I'll draw it around here and here and here and just rough this in. And you can see what just happened there. We've got, uh, 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 we've got a shape. Uh, we can control the shape using uh, Bezier tools that we already already have. And I think what we'll end up doing is something a little different, but uh, this works for now. Um, this is kind of the opposite effect. The mask is showing the, the dark layer and uh, right near our light source. So what I want to do is you can see we have uh, the masks available on this layer and there's mask one. And so instead of uh, adding space that's inside the mask, uh, we want to subtract that. And so that's basically going to, to flip it. And we can adjust the feathering. And I think that if we make that feathering big enough, we'll start to get the effect that I'm hoping for, which is that as we move away from this manhole cover, it's going to get darker and darker and darker. If I dial up the opacity now, I think that works for now. And and with any because this is layers, any time that we work with, with layers like this, you can decide to say, uh, you know, does it work better with or without it? Or is it too much? It's probably a bit too much. We'll dial this down a little bit. I think that's working to kind of hint that the light source is here. Pretty happy with the look overall. We've got some green goop here. I think we could have a lot of fun with playing with highlights in here. Uh, if this if this had a light source coming out, um, I think that would work pretty well. Uh, let's make a new layer, new solid layer, and we'll just select the color from the green goop. And again, this is uh, in this case we'll use this for the for the light being cast out of the manhole cover. So I'm going to do a very similar technique. I'm going to hit T to bring up the opacity information and just bring this down so we can start to see it. If I use my pen tool, again, this is going to draw a mask, uh, but this is going to be a pretty easy mask to draw because I'm really drawing the light rays and I have to draw on the canvas. Um, and I might rough these in as well, just so that it kind of follows the contour here. All right. So once we have the points drawn, we can actually drag those up and off the boundaries of the comp, and uh, which helps if we're blurring something and we don't want the top to get blurred. All right. Uh, so that's the, uh, the beams of light coming out. And we could, of course, experiment with this and um, play with uh, uh, a few things. It's a mask, so the properties that we had to work with uh, with the previous mask still work here. So we can change the feathering. Uh, I'm going to turn the feathering down to zero. And let's add <clears throat> a Gaussian blur effect to this layer. And so let's, uh, we'll repeat edge pixels and we'll say there's a 100 pixel blur here, which is going to be pretty pronounced. And that looks good. Uh, looks as good as the feathering technique down here. It's really the same effect. One thing we could do is add another layer of trans, uh, transparency to this uh, to make it very intense glow at the uh, near the goop. And then as we moved away, showing less. Uh, so one thing that we could do is for this layer, uh, we could we, we've created this mask to control the shape um, but we could let's make this just very uh, if I boost the opacity way up that's gonna be very very bright 
down below, but it would it would taper off as the as the light decayed, moving away from the light source. It would get more and more transparent as we moved up. So I'm going to make a new layer here, and uh, this is going to be I'm going to choose a, a well <clears throat> I'm going to make a brand new solid layer. And I seem to be making a lot of solid layers today. I'm going to choose bright yellow, a color that's not going to be used in the palette at all. Because this is a layer <clears throat> that is going to uh, control the visibility of another layer, but we will never really use it in, uh, in, as, as, a, as a visual element in the, in the scene. So uh, I've got this new layer here, and I'm going to add to this an effect. How about a gradient ramp? And so we can have, uh, this actually works really well from the default because we have this very uh, brighter, whiter color down here and we move to a darker tone as we move up. And so what I can do is make sure that you have your uh, toggles between switches and modes done. I'm going to choose the green solid layer. That's our light source and you can see the shape of it right there because that layer selected. And if you see, uh, this is our blending mode, like blending modes for each layer. So how it, how it calculates its transparency or uh, how it calculates the pixels in relation to other layers above it or below it. Uh, and then there's a track mat layer here. A track mat is, uh, is using the, the, the luminosity or the transparency of the layer above to control the transparency of this um, layer. And you can see, uh, as long as there's a layer above your layer, you can uh, you can select that as a track map. So for our light source, I can choose uh, to have no track map, which is the default, uh, an, a transparency track map. So uh, light that's based on the, uh, or transparency based on the transparency of the pixels in the layer above, uh, or inversion of the transparency of those pixels, or a luma map. And I'm gonna choose that luma map. By default, what this does is it makes the uh, if I the track mat is being is being uh, honored here. Uh, it's based on the tonal values in the yellow solid layer. And if I turn that yellow solid layer on again, you'll see we have <clears throat> brighter values down below and darker values up top. So I can change. If I choose that solid yellow layer, I can choose my bright uh, bright white to be here. Actually, this is going pretty much straight up, so I don't have to worry about that. So I've got pure white, uh, pure black, and a full tonal range between the two. And I can turn that layer off because it's because it's basically only being used to calculate the transparency here. So we've got very bright light down here and then things slowly transition up. Now this should never go to, to uh, black. We're gonna have um, light casting up. So I could probably set this value to something like a, a dark gray, and that would be a lot better. And again, we can turn that layer visibility off, and we've got pretty good transition there. So, so this light source is actually uh, a, mix, a, mac, a, a mix of two techniques. Again, we started with a solid layer and we drew this shape with a mask. And then we use a track map, the uh, grayscale values of the layer above it to control this uh, gradient between the two. The next step is to, let's, let's add some smoke. I think that's an important part of this uh, um, piece because we'll actually get some gradations in, in the uh, uh, in the light here. So to create smoke, <clears throat> um, I'm going to make a new layer. Let's see, we've got a few solid layers that we can work with. After Effects does a nice job of putting all your solid layers in a folder, uh, so we can we can work with that. And I can just drag a black layer on top. And I'm gonna call this the smoke layer. So we have a, a, a solid black layer. 
I go to the effects controls panel and I choose um, noise and grain. There's a great tool in here, a uh, great effect in here called turbulent noise. And it fills that black layer with um, this, uh, this smoky texture. Now there's a lot of uh, presets in here. So you could choose <clears throat> um, to have uh, a, a, a lot of different looks um, here. So, and uh, um, nothing's really jumping out at me here, but uh, uh, you can control basically the shapes in the noise. Uh, you can also control the contrast in the noise. And of course, uh, size of the noise, so you can change your overall um, uh, scale and have smaller or larger uh, noise elements. Um, in this case, if I go back to basic, basic's not too bad. Um, I think I would boost the contrast here a little bit uh, because we're going to, again, we want that high contrast kind of eerie lighting and you could change it to uh, change some of the values here um, and we can fine tune these as we need to. Uh, but one of the really nice things about uh, the turbulent noise is the fact that there's this evolution setting. So there's a, and if I start to adjust this, it's a churning effect that happens. So it's really the noise itself is animated. And so I'm just clicking and dragging that value and we're getting kind of this, this churning effect. So that, that represents the, the, the steam or smoke kind of rolling over itself. Uh, and so what I will do is, this is a really long comp, uh, so two minutes. Uh, I go to uh, composition settings. Uh, I'm gonna set this to uh, five frames, oops, composition settings. And I'm gonna set my frame rate to 30. So we should have, there we go. So we have five seconds of animation. <clears throat> and so our smoke layer, uh, we can, if you'd like to work in the effects panel, you can turn on your uh, evolution settings right here. You can click on that uh, stopwatch to enable time variation over time. And I typically like to st set it out at zero. And uh, watch what happens down here. We'll have our, uh, oops, wrong layer. Effects, turbulent noise. So there's our evolution and our first keyframe there. And we can scrub over to the five second mark and set this to, let's say five. And so now it's a question of, is, is this uh, churning too much or too fast or too slow? And I would say it's probably a little too fast. So maybe instead of five full revolutions of evolution, uh, we can cut that down to two. Cut it in half. All right, so now we've got a bit of a bit slower roll. And I think that's fine. Okay, now <clears throat> this, uh, this, this layer is currently kind of taking over our, <clears throat> taking over our scene. So uh, if we change this to a multiply, you can see that we've got, uh, uh, we can see the other scene behind it, <clears throat> and we can start to play with uh, controlling this this visibility. And uh, once we start to calculate the the actual churning or the the rotation of the uh, effect, you can see that there's a little bit of churning in there, and the smoke is actually um, I think the smoke is actually looking fairly good. <clears throat> So, um, that smoke layer has darkened our entire scene, so that's an issue. Uh, so what I would do is, let's see, I would want to uh, use it. I could draw a mask and use a similar technique. Um, but let's turn off that layer for a second. We have this. Uh, we have this. Uh, this this green solid shape here. And I think it works pretty well uh, as a, as a, as a mat, it would work as a mask for our smoke. So I'm going to just duplicate this layer. 
So control D or edit duplicate. Notice that it moves that duplicate above the uh, layer mask. Um, notice it also maintains that layer mask. So now we've got a situation where we've got this really bright green. And if you wanted to kind of follow through on the idea of this yellow solid, it would, would be your layer masks. I'm going to alt drag this and basically swap it, swap that out so that I can know it's a, uh, it's a layer mask here. And I'll move that above and we'll choose alpha matte. So we'll basically uh, match the transparency of the pixels. And that does a pretty good job. Now we've got this, uh, now we're using this layer to control the visibility of the smoke. So before we had no track mat, the smoke was everywhere. Now we've got a track mat and we're using the alpha mat of this yellow solid up here. And I think that's looking a lot better. All right. So that's, that smoke isn't churning as much as I'd like it to. It could be a little faster. But one of the things that's right now is fog. It doesn't really look like that smoke's coming out of the, uh, um, out of the manhole cover. So let's go in. We've got the smoke layer here. If I go to effects controls, <clears throat> we have a whole, I'll click on the smoke layer, hit the U key to see uh, all the keyframes. And so of course we only have evolution here so far. And we're over here at two. So maybe three full revolutions. That's gonna give me a little bit more churning action inside. And then another thing we can do, I'll scrub back to make sure I'm at zero. Uh, we've got a, a offset turbulence here. And so you can control the turbulence on an X and Y basis. And I'm gonna set this to zero and zero. And we'll turn on the offset of the turbulence. And then I'll scrub out a little bit and can go all the way to the end actually. And I just want to drag this. It's going to be a negative value. Drag it up. And so minus 500 just to have a round number there. And one thing else I can do is hit U again. And so you can see what we have animated right now is the offset turbulence and the evolution. And so now we've got this Smoke traveling up. There's some undulation inside the smoke. I bet, I think I'm going to end up going right back up to five in terms of the churning or evolution. Yep. Okay, we've talked about track, uh, we've talked about masks, we've talked about track mats, we've talked about individual layer transparencies. Uh, so things are things are going pretty well. I think there's a, just a little bit of touch-up work that needs to happen here, uh, and I, and and uh, to me that would be uh, just to make the lighting a little more convincing. Uh, we've got this this uh, uh, this light source here, and there's this open manhole cover here that's just jet black, and I think that we we want to fix that. Um, the easiest way to do that, I think, would be to actually solo or draw, hide everything. So, so a nice little feature is, of course, if you don't know about it, the solo, you can click this and it basically hides any other layers except for the soloed layers. So we can go jump right back here and I can make a new shape layer. It doesn't have to be down here. It can be new shape layer at the very top. That's soloed by default, notice. And uh, we have our bright green fill and I have my pen tool. And so I'm going to just uh, jump in and just draw kind of a cool kind of a cool shape here uh, at the bottom that might give us a little bit more credibility in terms of uh, if we're actually selling this this image. But this is going to kind of uh, represent our, and I'm gonna hold the Alt key there, Control Alt, and have that go out. Uh, this is gonna go here. Um, and we got there. 
I hold uh, control out and we'll add a couple of points so that we can maybe show some of this detail. There's like a rib there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just adding a little bit of detail. And I think that's gonna do it. So now I've got this shape here <clears throat> that we drew from the original. And we just turn off the solo for that and the solo for that and everything else will come back. And um, so now you can play with, if I hit T, play with the opacity there. Uh, we can play with the blending mode as well. So I might make that a screen or a lighten and dial that down. Um, and we could add a, let's see, we could add a uh, blur to that. So um, under blur sharpen, we do a Gaussian blur and a 15 pixel blur. And so this is, <clears throat> I'm, not, <coughs> I'm not really loving the look of that yet. Uh, I'm not sure what we can do to fix it, except for the fact that we do have this uh, light that, that's moving up. So maybe I draw using the rectangle tool. I'm on the shape layer, but I want to draw a mask. So notice that when I have the uh, rectangle tool or the pen tool selected with a shape layer, it automatically defaults to making a new shape, but click this and it will draw a mask. And so now we can have, uh, have this mask. And so now I'll draw this down and this here. Uh, and this is a really sloppy mask draw, but it's okay because we'll never see these actual points. And then we'll change the uh, feathering of the mask and that should be a little bit better. And you know what, that's not bad. Uh, it's at least a little more uh, believable given the gradient. Let me take this last manhole cover and duplicate it and bring it up to the very top. There's, there's lots of detail here that uh, I think would be important to show. So let's make you can see there's some dark points in here and some lighter points in here. And so if I have my, my shape layer, this is the, the green glow that's on this manhole cover. If I add this track mat again with a luma mat, that actually looks much better. You can see, it's hard to see, but you can see some detail there. If I make this a little bit more full, full opacity, now, we've kind of captured the texture of the manhole cover with this uh, glow. So again, I'm just relying on the lights and darks here and I could choose actually to make a tool like, uh, um, uh, uh, I could use levels or curves uh, to basically to do that. So if I chose levels uh, or uh, even the Lumetri color, this is a new, um, this is a new uh, effect in, in After Effects 2017, I believe. Uh, but this is nice because it has a lot of your basic corrections like contrast and some exposure settings. Um, but this is hardware accelerated. So it uses your graphics card and it renders quicker than traditional uh, effects like, um, like uh, uh, curves and levels. So we can really change that look using that Lumetri color. And uh, we can turn that visibility down. Now we've got some really nice uh, lighting playing there. You could do the same technique here on the, on the top of this manhole cover. Um, actually, you've got the shape layer right there. If we dragged our mask over here and we dragged our mask like this, and then I drew a ellipse tool and a shape layer then that would kind of work, right? Because <clears throat> now we've got that light there. If we move this up, you'd start to see that fade away. Yeah. And so this would be, again, a screen. 
if we don't like that, maybe this mask is too much. Oops. Let me let me redo that. Uh, we could keep this mask here, focus solely on the uh, the lid there, um, and then add another mask here. And you can see how that's changing that. But then make this second mask. Oops, I noticed that was a rectangle. Make sure we have the rectangle tool and that the mask is on. Because this is a shape layer I'm drawing on. Let's do that, and so now we're now we're seeing kind of the full effect of this, and <clears throat> we can change the the feathering, and move our values up here, and move this here, and have a much more pronounced effect there, and we can even adjust the individual opacity so that we can dial that up or down so that you can start to play with having the light sources come out. Okay, so I think that that works pretty well. If I were to go back and solo the original and uh, come back to the changes that we made and, and we were to hit the space bar and preview this, um, that's not bad for uh, using layers and transparency uh, and different blending modes and uh, shape layers, uh, kind of a whole range of everything to uh, to get this effect. So I hope this was a helpful tutorial. Uh, I'm sorry if it went way longer than it should have, but uh, I hope uh, you can you take a look at it. And thanks for watching.